Hello and welcome to Working Capital and Wealth Financing Decision. So we are going to cover what is working capital management, the nature of asset growth, cash flow cycle, financing alternatives, the financial decision, or the financing decision, risk return trade-off. So those are what uh, we'll be covering in this lecture. So what's working capital management? So let's first start off by, by uh, defining working capital. So working capital is defined as current asset and current liabilities. So our focus in this lecture will therefore be on the management of current assets and current liabilities. So controlling, managing, and financing investment in current assets of the firm would be the focus of uh, working capital management and those liabilities that are used to finance them. So most time it's a very uh, time consuming job and it takes up a lot of the financial manager's time but it's crucial to the long term success or failure of a firm because if the firm gets it wrong then it could become insolvent and insolvency uh, is, could lead to bankruptcy. So the nature of asset growth, as a firm expands, its assets will grow with it. So even those current assets, those assets that we consider to be current assets will expand as the firm grows. For example, this firm expands, it will need to hold more cash. So if it was holding $5,000 worth of, uh, of cash, as uh, this minimum cash balance, it may have to extend that minimum cash balance to 10000 Equally, inventory, if its firm was holding uh, $10,000 worth of inv inventory, it may decide that uh, a more prudent approach would be to hold uh, 15000 dollars worth of inventory. So as the firm grows, uh, its current assets will grow with it. So sales or revenue are linked with production. So without production, there would be no sales. Receipts are linked with payments or cash inflows are linked with cash outflows. As cash comes in, you are able to make your payments. So the simplest, in the simplest case, the firm's current assets are self-liquidating assets. So they sold at the end of a specific time period. So we normally say that current assets are assets that will be liquidated uh, within a year. And so in the simplest way, um, all these current assets will be self-liquidating and um, over say a time period of a year. And that is in its simplest term. However, sales and production are unlikely to be perfect. So even though the link it's unlikely that we are able to sell, to produce and sell pretty much um, in sync. So we need to sell 10,000 uh, uh, tires, we produce 10,000 tires and sell them. So it's unlikely to be as perfect as that. So sales are supported by investment in current assets often requiring permanent current assets. So again, as I say, without having beefing up that inventory, making sure 
that as, as, as sales increase, you are holding more inventory, um, and that increased in inventory, as, as long as the company is producing or, or is selling at that rate, then it will need to hold that inventory. As the company grows even more, it needs to increase its inventory even more. So oftentimes, as sales, uh, for, as sales grow, you have to make investment in current assets. And, and uh, we, we, we did touch on this when we were for, doing the, the, the forecasting. So sales growth increase uh, the current assets investment and internally generated funds are often not enough to, uh, to support this growth that we will see in current assets and the, the, the need for, for that growth in short term in current assets. So additional external financing may be required. So here's a graphical view of it. So where we have limited or no growth at the top, that's uh, the first stage, stage one. So you can see um, capital assets and above will there be temporary current assets. So that temporary current assets will go up then down and then uh, up and down again. In the second stage, where there's growth, we now have, first of all, we still have our capital assets, but now you have that growth that would occur in permanent current assets. And then on top of that, you will have your ups and your downs that you would normally see with your temporary current assets. So, in matching sales and production, remember we say that it's maybe not so easy to match sales with production and to ensure that production, what's produced, uh, what is needed to be sold is actually what's produced. So two possible production alternatives in relation to sales. So one, we have labor production and two, we have matching sales and production. So in one, uh, which is labor production is a method to smooth production schedules and use labor and equipment efficient efficiently at a lower cost but lead to fluctuation in current assets so what that means is that if if you have to produce a hundred thousand uh, worth of tires for example for the year then you may want to spread that evenly throughout the year. The year. So, right, so the equal amount is produced every month. So what this does will ensure that your labor and your equipment are used efficiently, and but it's going to lead to, uh, to um, some amount of fluctuation in current assets. On the other hand, we have matching sales and production, which eliminates large, season, large seasonal bulks or sharp production in current assets. So you won't have those um, large seasonal bulge or, or, or sharp production in current assets, but it's difficult to do and um, sometimes impossible sometimes to have that matching um, production perfectly. Hence, you may find yourself uh, not having to make, have, not having enough inventory or production to make your sales. So most firms employ a level production, which is much easier, and it is crucial to controlling the fluctuation of current assets. So let's look at um, an example where uh, temporary current assets under labor production are used. So, Yawakuza Mo Motorcycle Company employ a labor production method to produce motorcycles, while the sale of motorcycles 
is seasonal in Canada. So it says if motorcycle seasonal in Canada because um, during the cold time, um, usually uh, uh, motorcycles sale are not that high. So here's a forecast of, of the sales for motorcycle over uh, a year. So first quarter, the first uh, uh, the year starts October, and so during October, projection is for 300, then November 150, December 50, and there will be no sale in January or, no, and, or, or February, then in March, like 600,000, April 1,000, May 2,000, and June 2,000, July 2,000, August 1, thousand and then in September it will only be five hundred so in total sales there would be nine thousand six hundred units and at three thousand dollars each would mean twenty six twenty eight point eight million dollars in sales So here is the production schedule. Remember we said it's level production. So if it's level production, the equal amount will be produced every month throughout the year. So if you look here in our production column, you will see that uh, level production will mean that 800,000 will be produced throughout the year. And that would be 800, sorry, not 800,000. So at the beginning, there was an inventory of 800 uh, bikes or uh, motorcycles, and then there will be production of 800, but only 300 will be sold. Hence, inventory will be 1,300 units, and this 1,300 units will be valued at $2.6 million as each cost. Two thousand dollars to make. Again in November, so we have a beginning inventory of thirteen hundred. Again, eight hundred is produced. Sales only one fifty. So inventory is one nine five zero. And okay, we have and it's valid at three point nine million. So you can see as that inventory is continue to grow during the period of low sales. And it's not until there is an increase in sales um, that during the months of the spring months that you will start to see that reduction in inventory. So the build up in inventory would build up during the period of low sales and then that build up will fall off during the period of less uh, sales. So here's a forecast for the cash flow. Uh, we look at receipts, payment and the cash budget um, over the same period. So we can, we have sales in November of, in October of 300 units, November 150, December uh, 50, there was no sale in January or February, and then it continues in March, April, and so on, right to September. <clears throat> so at 300, uh, at $3,000, um, sale in October would be nine hundred thousand dollars, and in November four fifty. In December, it would be a hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and so on. So, cash receipt based on a collection of fifty percent in the month of sale and fifty percent the following month. So in, in October, we will be collecting 450000 from sale in October and 
750,000 from sale in the previous month, which would be the month of September. And you can see down here that it assumes that September sales of 1.5 million. So you can see the collection for November, which means the total cash payment, uh, the total cash receipts would be 1.2 million for October. So then we have to make cash payment and we have a constant production of 800 units per month at a cost of $2,000. So that's $1.6 million in terms of the production cost. Then there is overhead of 400000 and we have dividend and interest, but there's none in the month of October. Taxes are then paid of 300000 and so total cash payment would be $2.3 million. So based on that, our cash budget shows that our cash flow from the, uh, the difference between, between receipts and payment would be 1.1 million. Then we have a beginning cash balance of 250,000. Again, we can see here that the assumption is that the the cash balance of 250000 at the beginning of October and that this would be the desired minimum cash balance. So that being added to our cash flow would make a cumulative cash balance of negative 850000 and then a monthly loan would be required to take care of the deficit of 850,000 and then to ensure that a minimum cash balance of 250,000 would, um, would be available, which means that the total loan would be 1.1 million. And so we will go through the various months just the same using the payments and the, the cash budget to determine what, um, what would be the cash requirement during each month. So you, you can take your time, go through and ensure that you understand the different every month and how each number is uh, how much how the numbers for each month are determined. So total assets for the first year, you can see that the minimum cash balance in the first year would, in, would be 0.25 in the first month, sorry, of October, uh, in the first month of November, 0.25, and so on. Then you have accounts receivable of 0.45. Remember that the sale of October was 950,000, and 450,000 was received as, as cash payment during the month of October. So at the end of October, there will be 450,000 in accounts receivable, and so the accounts receivable balance at that time would be uh, 450,000. And then we also have that build-up in inventory which was cost in October at 2.6 million. The total asset buildup would be 3.3 million dollars. And again, you can go through each month and you will see the buildup based on our previous schedules. So for the second um, year, because we're looking at two years, for the second year, 
you again will see that the process restart but the difference is that there is a higher um, amount of cash flow that um, will come in the second year and so the need for loan may not be uh, necessary during this period so the company may have extra funds that it can use to um, to do other things like investing in, in capital assets or pay dividends and so on. So the nature of the build up in, in that uh, assets growth, we you can look at graphically so we can see that during a particular during particular months the build up in inventory as well as build up in accounts receivables that would take place in, in particular months and build up in cash that would also take place in particular months and then you can see how uh, during the certain months of say uh, July and August that the inventory uh, build up in inventory would become much less and then starts to increase again during those uh, months when when sales are are low that is, you see that again build up in inventory so you can you can see that during a particular period there may, you may have inventory building up and, uh, and then during a period of high sales that that inventory build up will fall off so the cash flow cycle. So a firm's ability to quickly convert assets into cash is is referred to as liquidity. So when a firm liquidity is called into question, often it will be difficult to continue in business because if you can't pay your bills, then you become insolvent and then it's difficult to continue from there. So liquidity is largely determined by the cash flow cycle. So liquidity is largely determined by the cash flow cycle. The so sales receivable and inventory form the basis of cash flow, but the firm's other activity can also affect inflow and outflow of cash. So Here's a cash flow cycle. Um, graphically, a customer will make sales. Now that sales is either cash sales or credit sales. So if it's cash sales, go directly into cash. If it's credit sales, it's go into accounts receivable, which is then converted into cash and sometimes in the future. Uh, that cash is used to purchase inventory, which is then inventory is then sold um, uh, so it then leads to sales so managers should, should pay close attention to the time it takes for the, the initial outlay of funds for raw materials until the firm collects funds from its clients for finished goods so here now is the timing of that cash flow cycle so this timing is referred to as the cash flow cycle so from the time when the company will have to purchase its raw material then it will have to convert this raw material into finished goods then it will sell these goods um, probably on credit and then wait to receive payment for these goods so the company again will purchase raw material it will then convert this raw material into finished goods then it will sell the raw material and then it will collect funds but the company in purchasing that raw material will have to pay for that raw material so it will have to make payments and the question is will there be enough funds available to pay for that given that a company will have to, pro to first produce the goods 
then sell the goods and then wait to collect uh, payments. So firms cash conversion cycle is therefore its inventory holding period, so that time period in which it has to hold those inventory, whether it's be raw material or finished goods, plus its average collection period, that time period that it has to wait on its customers to pay for those goods, and minus accounts payment period, a period in which it has to make payment to its creditors. So if the cash conversion cycle is positive, then there is a cash gap that will require the, the firm to obtain financing. So if that time period of inventory holding period plus average collection period, if that period is much longer than your accounts payable period, then the company will have a cash gap because what would happen would be that they're taking much longer time to convert into cash um, from that because of that inventory holding period and average collection period to, and, and because your payments are going to fall due for your accounts payable so, so then there would be a cash gap that would need to be um, financed So here is a linear representation of that. So you can see purchases and number one, we have inventory holding period. Then there is sale and then we have that average collection period before cash is received. So you have this time period here plus this time period here for when cash is received. And here we have our accounting, our accounts payable period and and as you can see this arrow here is if this arrow here is shorter than these two arrows at the top then there would be that time period here for which financing would uh, be necessary to use an ex expanded view an expanded view of the cash flow cycle so we know that there's again the customer and the customer will make sales either by some geographic flow, uh, area uh, um, product or division or customer type then this will either be converted directly into cash or its accounts receivable and if we come accounts receivable the terms could be 0 to 30 days, 31 to 60 days, 61 to 90 days, or 91 to 120 days, depend on the importance of the customer, depend on the, and, and the type of industry, and that as to how, or depend on how strong you are as, as, a, as a company, it, it, that would help to determine what kind of um, terms you give to your your customers so now that at some point in time that accounts receivable should be converted into cash so then we have marketable securities which of course this is a marketable security would be when there will be extra cash the company would go out and purchase marketable securities and these marketable securities could also be easily be converted into cash when um, necessary to maintain the adequate cash flow. Now, the company also will have to make interest payments or dividend payment on its on on its uh, financing uh, activities. So, if it's financing using using loans then there will be interest payment and if it's equity then there could be a dividend payment uh, of course there could be a combination of both if marketable securities are inadequate then the company may need to make short-term uh, borrowings so short-term lenders could be chartered 
banks are non uh, non bank lenders are foreign bank and lenders and government company would also need to pay taxes so this would be a cash outflow there will be a federal income tax or provincial income tax and so on then there would be the payment again a cash outflow for raw materials and sorry suppliers and accounts receivables for labor in terms of wages and other expenses would have cash outflow this cash of this smart raw material and labor and other expenses is what would help to make sure there's finished goods inventory there will be some goods that are unfinished which would be considered to be uh, goods in process or there would just be raw materials in the inventory so some of a cash would go directly to paying for those or it could flow through the use of raw materials and uh, wages what this inventory would what would make the sales so without having um, this inventory we would be unable to make sales so pattern of uh, patterns of financing financial manager selection of external source of funds to finance current asset may be the firm's most important decision so what if a firm has a small sales lever a large inventory needs to be financed and not generating enough cash so remember uh, when we were looking at that cycle uh, motorcycle example that during the months of january and february that there was no sales so now there would be a buildup of inventory and that buildup of inventory will need to be financed when the company is not generating enough cash so what if the firm finance finances with short-term sources of funds but is unable to renew that financing when they uh, became, when they came due so the company could use short-term sources of finance but they may not be able to renew those short-term financing if they if they become due so that could become a problem for the company so there are a number of, uh, of approaches that a company could use one could use hedge approach and this is much in the maturities of assets and liabilities so this would be most desirable but almost um, impossible to match when assets are mature with the liabilities that are used um, in their financing so this would be very much desirable but almost impossible so a more conservative approach would be using long-term capital to finance capital assets permanent current assets and a part of temporary current asset this would be low but less profitable less profitable because long-term financing tends to be more expensive higher interest rates for example than short-term financing but with long-term financing you will have enough uh, enough cash to be able to make your uh, to, to, to finance your, your capital assets your permanent current assets and even part of your temporary current assets a more risky approach would be using short-term funds to finance temporary current assets and part of permanent current assets it will be more profitable but it would be less it would be more profitable but risky because short-term financing is less expensive so that makes it more profitable but then you will have to um, make sure that this financing can be renewed and um, also um, in renewing those financing um, first you have to ensure that you can secure that those renewal of financing or there could be that you, they have to be refinanced at higher rate so 
those are some of the risks that may be seen when doing that refinancing. So graphically, then the hedge approach of matching long-term and short-term needs, we, you can see that um, we have short-term financing being used to finance temporary current assets, then long-term financing would be used to finance that portion of permanent current assets as well as capital assets. So this, will, this is a graphical look at the hedge approach. So using long-term financing for part of our short-term needs here in the more conservative approach, you can see here that short-term financing will use for only a portion of the long-term financing sorry of the long term of the temporary current assets so short-term financing would be used for a portion of temporary current assets and then long-term financing would be used for a portion of of temporary current assets all of permanent current assets and all of capital uh, assets so in the more risky approach, short-term financing would be used for the entire portion of temporary current assets and for a portion of temporary, a portion of permanent current assets, and then long-term financing will be used for a portion of permanent current assets and capital assets. So a financial manager should balance long short-term versus long-term financing by considering the composition of the firm's assets. So what are, the, are those assets that the firm are holding? Are they temporary current assets, or permanent current assets, capital assets? So you consider those um, a composition of those. The firm's willingness to accept risk. How much risk is this firm willing to take on? Um, how much is it? certain that it will be able to to finance these in the future and be able to have access to the necessary financing in the future so the risk and potential payoff from each financing alternative would be considered the term structure of interest rate would be important as well as the volatility of interest rate how volatile is interest rate? Is, is, is the volatility low or is it very uh, during a period of high volatility? So the decision tree would be um, here, as you can see, start out by financing uh, decision that could be either a long term loan, a lease, or short term loan. If it's a long term loan, this could be debt, uh, convertible security. Or equity. Now, if it's debt, it could be term secured or un unsecured. If it's equity, it could be common stock, preferred stock, or from retained earnings. So, lease, there are just two types of leases. It could either be a financing lease or an operating lease. And if it's a short term, then it could be from a bank loan, money market, or sales of receivables and inventory. If it's bank loan, then it could be unsecured or it could be secured. Unsecured could be a line of credits or notes, or secured it could be a pledging of receivables or pledging of inventory. And if it's money market, could be commercial paper or bankers acceptance or euro market. It, and if it is sales of receivable and inventory, it could be factoring or securitization. So short term versus long term financing. Short term financing is less expensive but more risky. Right? 
So you have lower interest rate usually, not necessary, not necessarily, but usually you have lower interest rate for short term financing. Short term rates are volatile, so there'll be some volatility there. The risk of default is still slow down, is much higher during short term financing, and the risk that the bank may not extend or renew those loans. So you have because of the, the risk that you may not be able to secure renewal of those loans or having the bank giving you that extension, so it increased that risk of uh, default. In terms of long-term financing, it is more expensive but less risky. Usually, interest rates are higher for long-term financing, and you may pay interest and funds you don't always need. So if you're securing long-term financing, so long-term financing may be secured, say, um, uh, six months from now that the funds would be required, but you know, you're securing that amount of long-term financing that you believe that will be needed over a, a particular time period. And that means holding on to funds that you may not need now, but maybe need what would be needed in six months' time. But that interest rate will uh, interest will have to be paid now, so you are actually paying funds and uh, paying interest on funds that you don't always need uh, at this point in time. So, but it, what it does, it gives you that peace of mind. You will have capital at all times. The so firm must decide between the appropriate mix between uh, long term and short term financing. So long term and short term interest rate and uh, we're looking here at commercial paper and corporate bonds. So commercial paper would be a short term financing, corporate bond would be long term financing. And you can see here that during the period of volatility that um, uh, that short term financing is more volatile than long term financing. But that uh, interest rate in general for short term financing tends to be less over uh, during that less volatile period than of corporate parts, uh, long term financing. So, this is just an example of long term interest rate versus short term interest rate. So, that's why it's important to know what's going on with interest rate. Is interest rate volatile? How long do you think that um, this volatility uh, would last? And so on. So the decision uh, or process, um, the Edward Corporation needs to finance 500,000 of working capital and $100,000 of capital assets. So how would it go about doing this? So it has identified two financing plans. So in financing plan A, deemed risky, is to finance 500000 with short-term financing. So the 500000 that would be needed for uh, current assets um, or for working capital would be financed using short-term financing. While B, a more conservative approach, would be to finance only a, a small portion of that 500,000 uh, of working capital with short-term uh, financing. So here are our um, two alternatives. Um, uh, alternative A, uh, there, there's 250,000 in temporary as, uh, current assets and 250,000 in permanent current assets for both alternative A and alternative B. So we have total current assets to be financed of 500,000 in both cases. So because uh, plan A is using uh, short term financing, which is much cheaper, it's only at 6% to finance that 500,000, while in, in plan B, you, we can see that 150,000 is used, uh, is, uh, so only 150,000 is financed using short-term financing, and the other 
350,000 will use a more expensive but more uh, secured uh, in, ter in terms of its um, of availability of long-term financing. So then we have capital assets of 100,000 and in both cases it will be financed with long-term financing. So in plan A, we have 500,000 being financed using the less expensive but uh, more risky uh, short-term financing and 100,000 is financed using long-term financing at 10%. While for B, it's only 150,000 that will be financed using the more expensive long-term financing and 450 would be financed using using long-term financing uh, which is more expensive so what would be the impact on, on earnings so from plan a we there would be a total of a reduction in earnings of forty thousand uh, dollars caused uh, by our financing strategy and in plan b the total would be 54,000 uh, reduction in earnings caused by the, uh, the strategy of having only 150 being financed using short-term financing and 450 being financed using the uh, long-term financing However, you can see here that the effect on earnings would be uh, the difference between the two would be only uh, $7,000. And this would be because of uh, the taxes. So the taxes would cushion that, um, that difference, even though the difference would have been, uh, say, 14 thousand but of course um, fifty percent of it would be taken care of by taxes to to reduce the the the, the effect of the higher costs on your income statement. So also note that long term financing could also be in the form of equity. Right? But equity financing does not have an explicit uh, cost on your income statement. And so, but the impact could be to earnings per share. So if the company goes out and, and issue more shares to get that financing, what that would mean is that it would be diluting the previous uh, shares so that um, no, it would be more shares to divide that earnings by. So there would be that dilution in earnings per share. So towards an optimal policy, the combination of financing pattern, short term versus long term and asset liquidity produces four possible working capital alternatives. One is the aggressive firm borrow short and maintain relatively a relatively low level of liquidity. So this is extremely aggressive and could lead to the company defaulting on its debt because it's borrowing in, in, in short term, which would have to be renewed. And maybe, uh, as I said, there could be reasons why those are not renewed, why the banks will not um, offer a loan and so the company could become risky. And equally, it's maintained very low level of liquidity. So it would be unable to meet it, its short term needs. So. The more moderate firm compensate for long-term financing with highly liquid assets. So if you're using those uh, short-term financing, then holding on to highly liquid assets that can be easily be converted into cash could be a way to compensate for using those short-term financing. Also, a more moderate firm may balance low liquidity with long-term financing. So 
it's whole low liquidity, but it has long term, it has, it's using long term financing, and because the company doesn't want to, to be paying too much for funds that is not needed right now, it's using low, lower level of uh, liquidity. So, the, but the more conservative firm. Uh, would you utilize long-term financing and maintaining a high level of liquidity. So this would protect the firm from the need to go out at any time and seek liquidity. But at the same time, the firm would have long-term financing, means that it will not have to go seek um, uh, financing anytime soon because it has already secured longer term financing and it's holding on to high degree of liquidity so this is this is probably the most expensive of them all but it also provide that uh, peace of mind so each alternative represents a trade-off between risk and returns so as as uh, as the company um, increases its risk it may increase its return but um, but also as it reduces that risk, that returns is going to fall off. So an appropriate strategy is selected based on the company's tolerance for risk. So the company's tolerance for risk will determine how the strategy, what strategy it will adopt. So here is another look at the current assets, liquidity and asset and the assets financing plan. So we could have one uh, number one, very risky, where short term financing are used and low liquidity. So it could be high profit, but also very high uh, risk. It could be you no know, number two, which is a more moderate approach so you have a moderate profit and moderate risk because although short-term financing is used they maintain a high level of liquidity um, or another uh, more moderate approach would be to have long-term financing and low liquidity and the more conservative approach would be low um, would be long-term financing and high liquidity and this would be the less profitable but the less risky it's less profitable because of uh, it would be holding one by one more funds than it actually required to use right now but that more funds would have a higher cost so that higher cost would reduces the profit of the firm and makes it less profitable but at the same time it would be uh, a, a low risk. So in summary, working capital management involves controlling and financing current assets. A sales increase, a sales increase firm requires increased investment in current assets. Level production with seasonal sales and the cash gap in cash flow cycle often require a firm to increase its investment in current assets, often with external financing. So hedge, a hedge financing approach attempts to match the maturity of debt obligation to the maturities of assets to reduce risk. Unfortunately, the hedge approach is very difficult if not impossible to employ. So a firm has to tailor the various risk and return trade-off to meet its needs. So the firm has a number of decisions to consider. Long-term financing may be safer but more expensive. On the other side, carrying liquidity Carrying liquid assets maintains the firm's ability to pay its suppliers but distract from its profit potential. So here you have it. This 
would be our lecture on working capital management.